getting back out there this week. After the bye week, we need to have a solid week of preparation for Tennessee, a team that's playing very good, winning three out of their last four. So we need to have a good, solid week of preparation. Uh, I like the way our team's going about their business. Uh, we had a good week last week, had an opportunity to get healed up a bit, get ahead on Tennessee. Um, so it was a good, solid week. And, Anxious to get back out there, get back out for the home crowd here this week. Mark, who was one of the athletes who benefited the most by the bye? I think all of our guys did. Um, I think Lynn, you know, is is a guy that that handles things so well uh, physically, uh, but you know, playing uh, quarterback uh, mentally, uh, it's very taxing on him. He's done a lot. He's taken a lot of hits. So I think it was good for Lynn, um, but all of our players. You know, it was always good to continue to work with our young guys and in, in the, the class that's getting redshirted. So had a good, solid week with those guys. Um, you know, continue to build on the good things that we were doing. Uh, maybe areas where we're falling short, uh, look to improve, um, develop. You know, these these guys uh, get ahead on Tennessee, do some recruiting. So it was a good, solid week. Is there a difference this? Time this second by as far as the attitude just coming off a win instead of you having to deal with the or did you deserve that? Or? No, I, I, we didn't see much different. You know, to us once we get back to work uh, last week, um, you know, we gave them Monday off, which was good for them. Uh, we had a couple uh, tough games, obviously, through that stretch, and uh, they had a day off on Monday, and then we got back and had some good, good, solid practices the rest of the week. Since uh, Willie Taggart was dismissed, your name has been on the short list of candidates for uh, all the media types and then creating those lists. How do you address that speculation? You know, it's, it's uh, something that you, you don't really want to address in season. There's, um, you know, I guess it's, it's better than the alternative. Um, so uh, for us, for myself, it's 100% concentration on Tennessee. That, that's all I want. It's all our, I want our team to focus on. Uh, that's all you can do, um, I guess. With success, you're going to have some of that. Um, you know, I, you know. If you, for, for me, sitting around here, this is six and a half years. I sit there and listen to Coach Cal, and every year he's going to the NBA, right? So, <laughs> uh, so um, you just dismiss it and concentrate on the things that you can control. I'm not going to get into speculation. I'm going to talk about uh, University of Kentucky in uh, in Tennessee. How do you go up uh, against a receiver like Juwan Jennings for the way he's been playing lately? Yeah, Juwan, uh, impressive player. Just, um, you know, just a dynamic playmaker. He's, uh, they, you know, just him and the other uh, receivers on, in, in, on their team, they are they're big and they're strong and they make plays. So, uh, but he's, he's a real difference maker. You, you have to know where he's at all the time. <coughs> Mark, obviously you're Maybe with Derek Ainsley uh, mm -hmm. from here, what, what does his defense look like at, at Tennessee? Yeah, Derek uh, is, is a, a really uh, great coach. Doesn't surprise me. His unit's getting better and better as the year's going on. Um, you know, you can see them playing extremely hard, uh, competitive, very sound in what they're doing. So uh, Derek's doing a good job, and they're, they're playing better and better as the season goes go, going on here. Mark, you guys don't have a full regular season scheme of Tennessee three. Uh, you guys uh, were making the plays for the sense that they're feeling uh, the stress with the win of opportunity closing to get six games to be bowl eligible. Our team, you're talking about? Yeah. Uh, we, we really don't look at it like that. You know, uh, for us, you know, the way the, the season was segmented, um, you know, the, with the buys in there, you know, right now, we did <coughs> talk about the break, just uh, getting freshened up, get away from it for a minute, healing up mentally, uh, decompressing for a moment. But when we come back today, ready to go. You know, we look at it as the, you know, the, the, the last stretch here with the four games, and, and we're worried about going 1-0. You know, that's the big message for us. Let's, let's uh, put everything into it and go 1-0 here this week. So, um, you know, the six games or anything, we don't, we don't even really acknowledge that. We want to win a lot more than six. The, the previous two games, you got off to pretty hot starts. Um, how do you make sure that the bye week doesn't take away any of that momentum? Yeah, it, it is what it is. As I mentioned, you know, we have no control over it once you get into the season where the buys are. 
And, uh, you know, after the first one, we weren't playing very good and, and uh, going into the first one. We needed that buy, needed to get healed up, that's for sure. We were kind of banged up and trying to create the identity of this team and where we were going quarterback and all those things. Uh, and then after this last one, we played probably as good a football as we played all year and uh, played extremely well against Missouri in all phases. And, uh, you know, but uh, you, you have to continue uh, to build on the good things that we did in that game and others. Uh, so it is what it is. Um, we approached it very similar to what we did the, the first one because coming off the bye, I thought we came back and played uh, pretty good. I can't recall who, who was it after the bye. But, uh, kind of focused on this game. We'll come back and forth. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, I knew we came back after the bye and had to win, and I thought our team played well, so I thought we, we managed the bye week appropriately. So uh, kind of went about it the same way. Tennessee's been pretty good against the run against the last two, three games. I think they shut down Tyler Hill pretty well compared to most. With that being said, do you plan on potentially getting Sawyer in there a little bit more since they are so good? I'm not sure. We'll see where work goes. We'll see where the preparation goes this week. Um, you know, I think uh, getting Sawyer back another week uh, to prepare, I think he's getting closer and closer, uh, knocking off all that rust, and he looked, uh, his, his arm looked stronger towards the end of last week, so hopefully he'll come out there this week and, and look really fresh and look good. So we'll see where it goes. Mark, for the fans, there are two games every season that mean a little bit more than everything else. I know you as a coach say every game's important, but do you think this team realizes how important this Tennessee game is? And what have you been yeah. telling them in terms of yeah. how strong uh, to finish the season? I, I think they do. Um, uh, they do. They feel the, the energy of our fan base. And, uh, you know, it'll be nice to be at home and have a great crowd um, and, uh, and play well at home, you know, so that's our focus. But uh, we will touch on that a bit. You know, we won't overdo it. But uh, I will talk to them about that. Does what happened last year at all play into that when you're touching on it? Just because of the I think it always does. You know, I think you know, uh, you know, we don't go back much. Um, you know, with with streaks and things of that nature, like like you all like to do. You know, but uh, <laughs> but um, but we do go back to a year ago just because it's recent home against a, a common opponent. You know. In looking back at that. Have you gleaned anything more as to why your team laid such an egg? No, no, I don't really want to go back there. You know, I beat myself up long enough about that a year ago, so we're, we're, we're on uh, to this year. But uh, definitely you need to learn, um, you know, each and every time you get an opportunity to learn and grow, you have to use that as well. Do you think you're going to get Phil Oscar back this year? Well, I'm not sure, um, you know, with, with Phil. Um, he really had some setbacks with that knee and with the surgery, and he hasn't been 100%. Um, so we will see. Uh, we, we may explore the possibility of trying to get a sixth year. So, um, you know, I'm not positive that. I don't think there's any guarantee on that. Um, so we're trying to manage that right now, get as much information as we can, um, and see, see how his knee responds uh, the, the last four games here. Um, he hasn't been cleared to this point. So uh, we'll see where that goes. And, um, you know, if that, that happened, that would be, you know, pretty good for us is, is we spent some time in the last week just with time of recruiting and looking at our roster. Uh, it does excite me. I mentioned that a, a while ago. Next year's senior class will have about 19 guys, depending on maybe a little attrition if some guys leave early or maybe <coughs> one, one in there too. You know, we'll see. But really strong group. And, and again, much like a year ago where there's a bunch of them and they all play. And then you look at the sophomore class, which will be juniors. You have 19 that will be in the senior class. You have 18 that will be in the, the junior class. And they're all players. They all they all help, whether it's special teams or in the two deep. And so that kind of excites me, especially if you get the opportunity to get a guy like Bill back. You had a feel for the fact that those first two games were the academic issue, what that would, how that would affect his chances to get I, I don't. Next. I don't. Is Isaiah in the same, you kind of start trying to evaluate that the same way a little we'll, bit? We'll, we'll look yeah. at it. You know, Isaiah has another year, so, um, you yeah, know, we'll see. Cash was out last week. Is, is, is he expected to For return me? cash, Dana? Uh, yes, he's expected to return, yeah. How's Ahmad Wagner doing? Ahmad's doing okay as well. Yeah. Chris Oates, at least to the naked eye, appeared to play really well uh, in the mm -hmm. last game. Is, pushing for more time regardless of Cash's well, health? You know, well, he, 
we, we need to rotate the thread from anyway. There's equal. You know, play in that position, um, you know, and swinging them back between Mike and Will, we can play the three of them and get equal reps with all three guys. You know, that, um, you know, that position is pretty physical, so you need them in it as well. You know, we really need a fourth. fourth Jamin's done some good things, so we've got to get Jamin going as well. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, coming into this year, secondary was a huge question mark when you lose all your starters. They're on pace to actually do better than last year's group. How surprised are you by just how far they've come? I'm pleased, pleased with their progress. I really am. Um, I think Coach Clank, um, Brad White, you know, defense coaches have done a really nice job. Um, the players have worked hard. They've been coachable. They've shown great improvement. Um, so I'm pleased with where they're at. We have uh, four big games left here in the regular season, and I'd like to see them continue to grow and, and respond. Um, much like we talked about the last game, um, uh, this week will be a great challenge with the, with the receivers that they have on their team. You know, they have some big, strong guys and some playmaking ability. Speaking of the secondary, Brandon Eccles has quietly been one of the highest graded corners week in and week out. What's allowed him to be so successful in his first year from JUCO to the SEC? Yeah, I think he's done a really nice job of working extremely hard, taking the coaching, and he's extremely competitive. He's making competitive plays. You know, when you're out there on the island, it's it's one on one. You, you've heard me talk about it over the years. You have one on one situations. We can protect. We can do things. You can roll coverages. You. You know, you can scheme things up at times, and there's times when you just have to flat out win one on ones. And uh, I've been pleased with his competitive nature. With, with JJ, Jared, and KD, did you see anything different since the, you know getting that yeah, play time? I think so. As I mentioned, you know, in here a few press conferences ago, you know, you you, you know, players you, they have to hold on to hope. You can never take play. You take their hope away. You take everything away. So I think that's where this rule is uh, important and giving them the opportunity to play in four games and um, you know we took advantage of that in one and so uh, we'll manage that down the stretch here but it's it's good to see them uh, continuing to to have great weeks and, and develop themselves because you know players aren't going to stay the same they're going to get better or they're going to get worse and uh, so you know it's it's been encouraging to see them have uh, really good practice habits and a lot of our freshmen have been that way. Are there any freshmen in addition to those guys you think you could Kind of well, there's quite a few of them. Yeah, yeah a lot of a lot of those guys. Um, we talked about it last week, and um, MJ was set to go in. We ended up holding him, you know. So we have some opportunities. You don't know what's going to happen with the injuries, and so we didn't feel the need uh, to get him in there. There's there's two ways to look at it, as you've heard me talk about it. You could throw him in there when you're ahead like that and get him some experience, or you could hold and wait and see what happens with some uh, injuries and things of that nature down the stretch when maybe you need him to be a bigger role. So uh, we'll, we'll see. MJ's well, the guy that uh, was doing well, I think, at the end of summer. Mm -hmm. You guys talked about uh, is, Has it been a case of the other guys just performing at, at a high level? That's kept it is. Up? It is. And then uh, he had a little, uh, you know, injury there to his wrist, and so that you know just set him back a little bit. I mean, he could got, go out there and play, but that, that sent him back a touch in, in the middle of the season there. You look at film Tennessee beginning of the year to now. What, are there areas that jump out at you as wow, they're so much better here than where they were? Um, you know, I just think, you know, across the board, you, you know, if you look at them, you, you, you know, like a lot of us, you know, you have to play good as a team. And, and it's just, a, you know, sometimes it's a, it's a matter of a play here or a play there. And you look at their early games, and that was certainly the case, a play here or a play there. And, and the outcome is different. Um, so they're, they're well coached. They're playing hard. Uh, they're getting better. They have <coughs> very talented players on that field. And so... You know, I, I'm not there. I can't pinpoint exactly what it is. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, again, a play here, a play there. Uh, with many of us in this conference, the margin for error is very small. And you have to uh, capitalize on it when you get an opportunity. They played three quarterbacks, played two Saturday. I think one played the first series in the first half and the second half. Go back to here and tell them. What do you see from their quarterback? Yeah. Are they different enough that you have to prepare differently? You don't have to prepare. No, don't, don't need to prepare. Um, any differently, they, they you know call plays uh, very similar, um, and both uh, very good. Um, you know, I think like most people, like most offenses, you know, when they're in rhythm and the quarterback's in rhythm and playing well, then, then the offense is going. And uh, you've seen 
uh, spurts of that, in particular the last three, four games, where they've uh, you know been uh, you know very much in rhythm and comfortable in moving the ball. Mark, your offensive line is really coming on strong. Would you agree that they were a little bit of a disappointment at the beginning of the year? And what's been the result of the change? I'm pleased with where they're at and how they've played. Um, you know, you know, I, I'm not going to use that word. You can't, um, but uh, you know, you know, I think like all of the team, you know, with myself and everybody in the organization, there's always times when you can do better, <coughs> and uh, we're always going to embrace, you know, that and look at ourselves and. Start with yourself and your play, and, and my job coaching them, and, and everybody in the organization to do as good as they can. And uh, if there's areas where they're falling short, I can promise you um, those guys are very conscientious and they're very well coached, and it's important to them. And uh, you know, I'm pleased with the way they've been playing. That was their cleanest game as far as mm -hmm. penalties and stuff. Was that a, you were just them just really trying to you finally like, kind of honing in? I think in it's just a byproduct of the things that I just mentioned. I think it's it's important to them. I think uh, Coach Larman does a phenomenal job. Those are very conscientious young men that care about winning, and uh, they're trying their very best. Mark, when you said when the staff sat down last week in your bye week and you looked ahead to four games, where you are at this point in the season, was there one or two areas where you feel like, hey, we got to get better in these areas to finish out strong? Well, it, definitely. I mean, th there's there's a lot of areas that I don't want to go into detail here and give our opponents, a, you know. A, 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 but yeah, I think there's very specific um, areas that, um, again, I think you know that and listen to me through the years that, um, you know, constantly in a, a learning environment, constantly trying to get better, build and continue to grow uh, on the good things that you're doing. If you're falling short in certain areas, you better look at it and. Uh, and try to address it and improve, you know, get better, whether it's schematically, whether it's personnel, um, you know, any, any issue you can to, to try to get better because we know our opponents are looking at us and studying us pretty hard and uh, looking at our flaws, and so uh, they need to be addressed each week and each day. Mark, the depth you're building at outside back with those young guys playing last week, does that let you play Josh Pascal on the line a little bit more, or does that change? Us? Well, it, it definitely does and will and can in the future. So we'll see where it goes. Um, you know, the, that's the beauty of it with Josh. He's very unselfish. He'll play where needed. And really, he's, you know, got strengths and weaknesses at, at, at different positions, you know, but he's very versatile. And, um, you know, so, um, you know, it gives you the ability to move him around. He could always stay on his feet. He's so sturdy, so strong uh, that you need that in certain positions, you know, certain times, certain teams certain personnel groupings, and then you can move them inside as well. Now you get an athletic guy inside. and uh, So we'll continue to explore and try to put him in the best position to be successful. You Mark. mentioned after the first bye week that your coach, your defensive coach, has kind of helped the defense come together more. Mm -hmm. How important is it to have a coach like Dean Hood and some of the guys that's been around the college game a long time? How is that beneficial? Well, it's very, very important. You know, the experience matters. Coach Hood is a guy that's been around a long time and uh, he's been a head coach and, and um, you know, very well respected within our building and, and nationally. And so, um, you know, it, it is important. It's important uh, is, you know, for myself to constantly make sure I'm utilizing all the things I can in, in leaning on you know, our coaching staff to make sure they can help. I think our staff has done a remarkable job at, um, you know, really building those relationships and continuing to build those relationships. And trust is uh, the most important thing. And, um, you know, I think uh, our staff has worked hard and uh, our players have worked hard. And, uh, you know, we've, our identity has changed throughout this, this year. And that happens all the time, each and every team you know, will, have, will be different and uh, needs to create their own identity. And, um, you know, I'm proud of our staff and our team and our program for fighting through adversity. And adversity will reveal a man to himself. And so, uh, you know, I think that's been good and it's been helping uh, us kind of uh, create our, where we're at right now. And we're not perfect, but uh, I like going to work every day with these guys. And uh, I love the staff and this team and these players. And, you know, there's been a shift in the last three, four weeks, and so we need to continue to build on that. Mark, will you address the FSU speculation with the team at all? Oh, there's no need, no need to address that. I mean, there's, I think 
our players know where my heart's at and where my focus is. I can promise you, they'll know that we'll be ready to play this week and be ready to go. There's there's no denying that. So there's no need to, you know, just continue to do what we're doing. Mark, you've expressed the a pleasure, perhaps uh, maybe satisfaction to some degree of, of your class, the Clinton class coming in. Um, how difficult has it been to, 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 to keep that together? You know? It's always a challenge. Uh, that's a never ending process um, to continue, um, you know, to cultivate those relationships and to keep that class together. It's important um, with the leadership, you, you know, within that group in, in itself, that sometimes uh, creates its own identity and the, the way they uh, they are very close amongst their group. Yeah, and I think that always helps, um, but that's a never ending process. You know, in our business, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, at the end of the day, I truly believe who ends up here is meant to be here, you know, and, and uh, to act like recruiting or this job or anything in it is not personal would be a lie because it is, it's part of our life. And so, uh, you know, a lot of times things are personal. It's just the way we, we, we go about our business and recruiting is really not much different. Uh, but that's what's helped us have great success um, and will continue to have that is the relationships that we have with people and being authentic and, um, you know, so I'm proud of that, and I feel good about the way we're going to finish. How much in the past, it? you've been able to, uh, we've been able to pinpoint a particular player that has been very instrumental in uh, in helping the recruiting. Uh, and who would you say that person is at this particular time? Obviously, you're talking about guys on our team, yes. right? Yeah. You know, I'm <laughs> <laughs> you trying to trick me. <laughs> 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 Season veteran now can't give me that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, I think at the end of the day, um, the players are going to recruit yeah, yeah. your program, all of them, mm -hmm. and uh, you can't hide from that. When they come in, they spend time with our team. Uh, the culture's right. If they enjoy being there, then that'll recruit it itself. And, and uh, I'm always transparent in that area and tell the recruits you, you spend time around our team. Them tell you what the pulse of this place is and what it's like to come to work every day. And we never pretend to be perfect because we're far from it, uh, but we work hard uh, for our players, and I think they know that. How much does the speculation, like you know, the Florida State stuff, affect recruiting? And even like even just going back to maybe when it, you got it hurt. probably affects that a little bit more in that the, just the, what what goes on in this world and this media with social media and all that. And I don't mean to be so old that I can't understand that, but it's just a little bit absurd how, 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 absurd how fast things go. And, you know, people like to get out in front of their skis really far <laughs> on that, in that world. So uh, it just, uh, you know, that just needs to be addressed, but nothing that we can't handle. And, and uh, so, you know, I think uh, that's a fair assessment, maybe with recruiting more so than anybody else, because I promise you, in our building, they're not going to worry about anything except getting ready for Tennessee. So, all the folks that think it'll be a distraction, I can promise you it won't. Mark, in yeah. terms of recruiting, how much of a tangible in, impact is there validating what you're doing you, when they can see what Bud Dupree is doing in those areas, Josh? Well, I think it's it's very important. Um, you know, I think you know, but by, by the way we do things, you know, we try to be very intentional. I think a lot of people talk about a lot of things. We try to really show what we do and how we do things and and uh, the way we go about our business. And um, so, um, you know, when when guys are going on and having success, I think it, it does nothing but help you. Mark, I've never been a coach. I never will be a head coach. But <laughs> Come on, John. <laughs> As a head coach. You're a pretty good walker. <laughs> Stay in shape for you, don't you? What, what are some of the things that are important to you as a head coach in regard to where you want to spend the rest of your life coaching? Um, well, I think, you know, that's a pretty deep question there, John. <laughs> but, uh, but I think it's a fair assessment. You see me around the neighborhood, and, uh, you know, I think it's really, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that, that factor into that. 
we don't have enough time for me to dive into all that right now. But uh, uh, you know, certainly support quality of life. You know what you're doing. Um, there's things that are important to me um, that what people perceive is an easier job or better job, and things. Uh, you know, we always as coaches and and I've had a great perspective with my family of um, looking at things and and you know doing what's right for you and your family. Okay, folks, thank you very much. Appreciate it.